Thank you for tuning in to Propel Church. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to our podcast, we're so glad that you chose to join us today. We believe that God has great things in store for you and hope that you are encouraged and inspired by this message. Well, we're excited because we are in a message series called Build the Hub. Turn to somebody and say, Build the Hub. Y'all did way better than nine. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not biased. You're my favorite for this moment. And uh, we are in week four of this message series as we've been talking about building the hub. And what this is for us is it's really our kind of kick off into the next season. We've told you that we are building a building in Mount Pleasant. This shouldn't be a shock to any of you. We've been talking about it uh, for the last eight months. We've been kind of on this journey after we closed on land in September. We've been praying, planning, and preparing. And so on the kickoff of this series, week one, we talked about how this is bigger than a building. Our heart is to build an Acts 2 type environment, that we would build a space where people from all around would come into a location, they'd have an encounter with Jesus, it would change their life forever, and then they would go back into their workplaces and out into the world to make a difference. Then on week two, we talked about sacrifice. And how sacrifice is not about an amount, it's about a heart posture. And that sacrifice is giving up something we love for something we love even more. Last weekend we talked about obedience. And to celebrate with you, we saw 15 people go public with their faith in (laughs) baptism. Huge. Amazing weekend last Sunday. This week we're going to talk about faith. But it all leads us up to what next Sunday is. And that is our big Give Weekend. It's going to be the last weekend of this series, and we're going to go into a two-week series called Open, uh, all about sharing your faith right before we get into Easter. But this next weekend is where uh, we as a church come together, and on week one of the series, we gave you a bag that had a booklet in it, had all kinds of information, but it also had a giving envelope. And what Scripture teaches us is that each person should give according to what they've decided in their own heart, not out of reluctance or compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And so we said, all we want you to do for the next couple weeks is pray over this envelope about what you and your family would do as a one-time gift and then a two-year commitment to build uh, the hub here in Mount Pleasant. And so next weekend, we're all going to come together as a church and bring these envelopes back with you. If you don't bring it, we'll have you covered. But if you don't have any of the information on the building, uh, there is a pop-up out in the lobby called Build the Hub. Uh, There's actually charcuterie cups out there. They got some snacks for you. Uh, But we'd love to give you a bag that has all that information there as well. And so we're in this series, we're talking about faith, and I shared with you last Sunday, right before we kind of wrapped up, uh, that I was heading out of town uh, to do an event. We started an event a few years ago called the Lead Pastor Getaway, and that has turned into its own nonprofit called Selah Leaders, and we do this event called Lead Pastor Getaway. So we had it last week. I want to show you a photo of some pastors that came all from all around the world. They came with us on one of the days. Uh, we do a fly fishing day uh, just to enjoy God's creation. But they come in, and uh, some of them think it's a fishing trip. It's really not. Uh, <laughs> it's a bait and switch, right? We get them in <laughs> thinking it's fishing. But really what we do is we have sessions where on session one we talk about identity and we talk about how we are sons before we're pastors. Session two, we talk about rest and making sure that we have a good theological foundation on the principle of rest because it is vitally important. And then on session three, we talk all about stewardship. And session three happens on the fly fishing day. One of our overseers uh, is Pastor Brian Dooley with Nikeo Church. He joined us for our fly fishing day. He came back to the house, sat through the session, and then him and I were talking on the porch, and he was just asking me questions about this season of our church. I have men who I trust in my life that hold me accountable and help encourage me and and really uh, keep me on the right path. And so I was telling him how excited I am to build the hub about uh, the impact it's going to have in Mount Pleasant and the surrounding areas, but I said one of the things I'm really excited about is I've got this vision that one day 
there's going to be a, a place, a building in Mount Pleasant where churches come from all around the world to learn about what it looks like to do healthy, life-giving ministry. That ministry wouldn't be a burden, but it would be a joy and that we could impact not just a hundred people or a thousand people, but hundreds of thousands of people. So one day, pastors are going to come from all around the world to be a part of this. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Nick, they already do. They already fly in from all around the world to learn about what God is doing in Mount Pleasant. Don't miss that God is using these moments to build your faith for the future. And it fit right in with what we're going to talk about this morning. I want to teach you some things on faith because sometimes I think we feel like faith is this really passive thing. But what Scripture, I'm sorry, what Webster, Webster and Scripture are not the same. Let me give you, we'll just get that out the way real quick. There's only one big G. It's not Google, it's God. Uh, faith, this is what Webster has to say. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Right. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, this changes a little bit because we don't put our faith in something. We put it in someone. Right. His name is Jesus some of you have been in the position before where you put your complete trust or confidence in someone, being maybe a friend or a family member, and you learned a really hard but valuable lesson that people cannot sustain the weight of your faith. Right. Only someone who's willing to die for you can sustain the weight of your faith. God is the one who we put our complete confidence in, our faith, our hope, and our trust in. And we're going to open up a passage of text today in 2 Kings chapter 3. If you have a Bible, you can turn there. It's in the Old Testament. It comes right after 1 Kings, right before that. Not super sure at the moment, but your Bible has a concordance. And so 1 Kings, then 2 Kings chapter 3, we find the story of these three kings. And these three kings have been uh, getting prepared to fight the Moabites. They thought it was going to be a really easy battle. In fact, when they joined forces together, they outnumbered their opponent six to one. So if you have 600 people and they have 100 people, you don't think that it's really that big of a fight. You feel like you're going to just run all over the enemy. They were not just bigger or larger numerically. They had more training. They had more experience. By all accounts, this battle should have been a cakewalk, but it's not. When they go to fight, they find themselves losing. Things don't go as planned. As they march against the army of the Moabites in the desert, they run out of water. And they not only run out of water, the land has become completely dry. They are in the middle of a drought. So they call in the prophet Elisha to help them. And Elisha pretty much says, this sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> you know? It's like, you ever been there before where somebody brought you something and you're like, man, that, that seems really tough for you. I'm not sure how this involves me. But then Elijah comes to the realization that God has given him the opportunity to help these people. And so in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, Elisha gives them the plan for what is to be done about the drought problem they're in. This is what the text says. But now bring me a musician. And then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. That, that's why um, we bring musicians out at the end of the worship experience, like at the end of preaching. It's because the hand of the Lord falls when music starts playing. That's just, that's just how it happens. And then it says this, and he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see the wind, nor shall you see the rain, yet this valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. This is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hands. These men had experienced an incredibly large drought. If you've ever been in a drought, you haven't been in North Carolina. We're doing fine right now, right? But they're in a drought and there's nothing they can do. They've tapped out all their water resources and now they are believing that God is going to work on their behalf and send them some water. 
I think sometimes when we have faith for God to do big things, we just expect him to do it. But faith requires action. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down this morning, that faith requires action. They weren't just sitting around believing that God would send water or send rain. No, instead, the prophet says, if you really want to see God do something, you're going to have to pick up a shovel. I think oftentimes we think faith is waiting on God, but it's actually digging ditches. Faith requires action. It requires you to pick up a shovel and partner with God and go to work standing on faith that whatever he told you to do, your action will somehow correspond with the miracle you see God do. It's not just sitting around and waiting on God. No, last week we talked about uh, obedience leading to breakthrough. The way it happens is that you allow your faith to kick it into high gear and not just wait around for God, but to partner with Him. James teaches us that faith without works is dead. In other words, faith that has no action tied to it really isn't faith at all because the evidence of faith is my willingness to move. Faith requires action. It doesn't make sense what God told them to do. I would think that if, if I was looking at the story, it would, it would kind of be like, okay, you need water. We're going to pray for water. We actually see that in other portions of Scripture. They needed rain. They prayed for rain. Instead, the prophet's really clear that, hey, if you want water, go dig a ditch. I don't really know how that helps me with rain. But what I do know is that if God told me to do it, he'll be faithful to provide for it. Faith isn't waiting on rain. It's standing on God's promise and picking up a shovel, knowing that your faith isn't wasted. And I teach you this this morning because we are entering into a ditch digging season. We're a church that believes that it's not just about going, one day God is going to build this amazing facility. No, instead, we are partnering with him in that. We're grabbing a shovel. We're doing the work. We're coming alongside of him on this journey. Next weekend, when we bring back our our Build the Hub envelope and we we bring those one-time gifts and those two-year commitments, it's ditch digging. And we're digging ditches before we ever see any evidence of rain. Now, we've seen God provide in the past. We've seen God move on our behalf. We've seen him do things that we thought were impossible. But even if we haven't seen God do something right now, it doesn't stop us from digging a ditch. Verse 17 of that text says that you're not going to see the rain or the wind, but it's going to happen. That's what faith does. Faith doesn't wait to see results. Faith chooses to move before you ever see anything come to pass. We are a ditch digging church because we got ditch digging faith. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Second Corinthians 5, 7 says this, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Doesn't say we wait by faith. Doesn't say we sit by faith. We walk. There's movement involved. I trust that God has called us into something. Therefore, my feet respond with movement. That's the goal of fear. The goal of fear is to keep your feet planted where God has clearly told you to move. But faith operates in something completely different. We see this in the life of Peter. Peter is about to, uh, he's in the middle of a storm, but he sees Jesus on the middle of the lake. And when Jesus is in the middle of the lake, he calls out to him to come. Peter uses courage to hurl his legs overboard, but then uses faith to literally walk on water. I don't know what kind of word or encouragement you need today, but I want to help build your faith because of the things we've seen God do in the life of our church. It required action every single step of the way. It took faith in 2015 to plant a church in a town of 1,800 people, but God ordained it. It took faith in 2017 to cap our salaries at 35% of our budget and choose to give a minimum of 
12% of our budget to missions and outreach, but God honored it. It took faith in 2018 to move our church to two experiences, not because we had no more space, but because we had vision that was bigger than what we were currently experiencing, and God sustained it. It took faith to move in an old middle school, but God orchestrated it. It took faith to try and regather to raise money to buy an HVAC system in the middle of a pandemic so you didn't die from an airborne virus, but God supplied it. It took faith to keep going when we regathered as a church and came back at 30% of our pre-COVID numbers, but God rebuilt it. It took faith in 2022 when we found out our facility was being sold, but God protected us. It it took faith to cold call landowners after we were told the land we wanted didn't even exist, but God revealed it. It took faith to sign a due diligence agreement on land we didn't have money for, but God paid it in full. And I tell you that this morning because we're not putting our faith in me or in anyone on this team. We are putting our faith in a God who we've seen cover us every single step of the way and provide for our church. This is what faith looks like. Faith requires action. Faith requires us to walk in obedience even when we don't understand what God is asking us to do. But time and time again, we've seen it in the life of our church that he has covered us every step of the way. Our faith isn't in something or someone. It's in a God who has a perfect track record and we walk in accordance to do the things that he's called us to do because we've seen what he can do. In the past, we are a walk by faith, ditch digging type of church. And our movement is evidence of that. I was talking to a pastor this week. We were sitting down in the mountains and he was like, hey man, I've been following uh, you guys and, and I love the building you're building. It looks great. It's beautiful. How in the world are you going to build it and do this thing for $3 million? I said, we're going to dig a lot of ditches. <laughs> we're going to dig a lot of ditches. I don't have all the answers. What I do know is that when we walk by faith, God does something amazing every single time. Because here's what the text shows us as well, is that God is working even when you don't see it. God is working even when you don't see it. Verse 17 was very clear that you're not going to see the wind and you're not going to see the rain, but somehow God is going to provide. And I think sometimes we get discouraged by our lack of sight. But faith is not based on sight. Faith determines our movement, not our vision. And so as we walk by faith, as we move in the right directions and do the things that God has called us to do, I just want to encourage somebody today that even if you don't see that God is working, it doesn't mean he's not. We see this all throughout Scripture. Habakkuk chapter 1, it's, it's one of my favorite passages of text because Habakkuk is in this moment where he's really frustrated with God. So Habakkuk teaches us that if you find yourself frustrated with God, the best place to go is to write to his feet, to go to him. And Habakkuk says this in chapter 1, Lord, how much longer will I cry out without you listening to me? There's, there's uh, chaos in the streets. There's rebellion everywhere. People are murdering one another. They're harming one another. This world is dark. How much longer will I cry out without you answering? In verse 5 of chapter 1, God responds to Habakkuk and says, Look around and be amazed, for I am doing something in your day that even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. God is working even when we can't see him. We see this in Scripture, that if you get to the end of your your Old Testament, right before you get to the New Testament, for us, it's a page turn. For them, it was 400 years of silence. But the end of the Old Testament closes to open up to the New Testament being the birth of Jesus. God wasn't not moving. He was preparing a way for Jesus to come. Just because God is silent doesn't mean he's absent. Doesn't mean he's not working. Doesn't mean he's not doing things on your behalf. For, for some of you, you are walking in faith because you feel led to find a new job. And you've been applying to things, but you're not seeing any of the results happen. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that God isn't working on your behalf. Right. 
For some of you, you've been investing into somebody who doesn't know Jesus, and you've been pouring into them, and you're wondering, is this even working? Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not working. Because every seed you plant, the growth happens beneath the surface before it ever comes to the top. God is working and doing things that you can't even see in the moment. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean God isn't working. And I love that this is what we see in the text because it says the Second Kings chapter 3 verse 20 says, The next morning, about time for the offering of the sacrifice, there it was, water flowing from the direction of Edom, and the land was filled with water. They didn't see God do it, but it got done. I can look back over times in my life where I walked by faith and I didn't know how God was going to do it. Because sometimes that's what we want. We, wanna, we, we would think, oh, God's just going to send rain and it, when he sends rain, then we'll be covered. But he chose not to send rain. I think sometimes the reason why we experience disappointment is because we put all of our faith in what God should do rather than what he will do. I don't know what God's going to do because I'm not God. But faith doesn't box God in to say God has to do this a certain way. Faith says, God, I'm going to keep walking knowing that you're going to do something. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I know if you said you were going to provide water, you'll provide water. That's what faith does. Even when we see it, God is, even when we don't see it, God is working. My challenge for some of us. is to not wait before we start moving. It's like some of us are just waiting to see it before we can see it come to pass. And we say, Lord, if, if you'll just show me, then I'll follow. That's not faith. That's walking by sight. Faith says, God, I'm going to walk even when I don't see it. That's how we love that song. We sing it from time to time, Waymaker. Even when I don't see it, your work, right? You know, like, <laughs> you never stop, right? You just, that's why I, they don't let me audition. <laughs> I can sing a, a whole new world, though, pretty well. Um. <laughs> the challenge is to not wait, to not wait for all the answers before you start moving. And that's kind of where we've been as a church in this last season and the one we're walking into now, we don't feel like build the hub is a cute saying or an expression. We really feel like it's the word that God's given us. So we're doing our part to dig ditches, knowing that God is faithful to cover what he calls. Now, don't miss this in the text. What they're able to receive is based on the ditches they dug. So God's going to send the water, but the harvest is always based on your stewardship. The harvest is based on what you're willing to do. That's why Jesus says in Scripture that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The church never has a harvest problem. It always has a labor problem. In this text, the way you go from having a puddle worth of water to a pool is you dig a ditch. You do the work. And when they chose to dig ditches, God was faithful to cover what he called. Their blessing was based on what they had prepared for. That's what digging ditches is all about. It's a season of intentional preparation to get ready for the vision and things that God has called you to in the future. And so we've told you this whole time that our plan is to build a $3 million facility, splitting it 50-50. We're going to finance $1.5 million, and we're going to raise $1.5 million. You're already a third of the way there on raising uh, that $1.5 million. But here's what I want to make sure you know. We've got more than $3 million worth of vision. I got $15 million worth of vision sitting in an Excel spreadsheet. Like, I'm... (laughs) I'm ready. But we move at the pace of people. We move at the pace of those who are willing to dig ditches. If if we come together as a church next week and we blow that $1 million that we need to raise over the next two years out of the water, we're not going to be confused with what to do with it. 
We've already dug the ditches in the background. We've already said, if we, if we raise more than this, here's what we'll do. And we know all the steps accordingly because we never, we never let money drive vision. Vision drives where we put money. We'll always have more vision than money. I've been doing this a long time, man. If, if I only had vision for what I had money for, that, that would be bad. Our finance director laughed. I'll come to her with big vision, and then she'll help figure out how to make it happen. <laughs> right. I, uh, I was looking back, because we've done this before. We've, we've raised money for things, and we, back in 2019, we were getting ready to move into uh, renovate the old Mount Pleasant Middle School and, and make that property our home for a little while, and uh, I watched the video of that teaching last night. So I was like, I want to see how I did and uh, critique it and do some things moving forward. And I was watching it. And what I thought was so funny is I stood on stage then and said, uh, right now I'm, I, I'm, we're talking about raising $500,000. But there's going to come a time several years from now where I stand on stage and talk about raising three to $4 million. And you're going to think 500 was nothing. <laughs> and what happens is over time, as you watch God cover the things he calls, it just builds your faith for what's next. Right. Like as you watch God provide for you in one season, you end up creating these, well, this is what they did in the Old Testament, is they built these little monuments out of rocks. And they would stack these rocks up. And, and they did it so that as their kids grew up and asked, what is that for? They would say, this is a monument to testify about the faithfulness of God. They'd, they'd put them every uh, so often along the journey so that when they looked back, they could look back and see this monument that they built to honor God. And when they looked back, they would see that if God covers us in the past, we know he's going to cover us in the future. And there's little reminders that God's put in the life of our church over and over and over again. And there's going to come a time two years from now when that facility is built and we're in there and enjoying it that every single day we get to drive by it and look at what God did. Right. Look at his faithfulness. Look at his hand over our church and be reminded that it's always been bigger than a building. It's been about people. Yeah. Experiencing Jesus. But to receive the harvest, we've got to get ready to dig some ditches here in Mount Pleasant. So that's what next weekend's all about. But I love what Paul does. In Philippians chapter 1 through 4, as he's encouraging the church of Philippi, he says this, In all my prayers for all of you, I pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul is writing a letter to a church but he's really doing it to encourage the people he's telling them that it might look like you don't have faith for what's now like it might look like all hope is gone in your life but you can take confidence in this one thing that God who began a good work in your life didn't bring you this far to drop you now. That God who started a work in your life, who loved you enough to send Jesus to die in your place, isn't just going to drop you. He's going to be faithful to cover you and sustain you and to lift you up in your time of need. He who began a good work will see it to completion because we serve a God who finishes what he starts. Now, God has no obligation to finish the thing you start, but he is faithful to finish what he starts. Yeah. I've seen that in my life. I've seen that in our church. Listen, buying land in Mount Pleasant was, was not my plan in 2021. In 2021, I was getting ready to, to reveal to some of our leaders that we were going to build a, we were going to try and buy the property we were in, which we had been trying for years, but we're going to buy the property we were in. We're going to build a brand new facility on the softball field. And 
we didn't have the money to get building designs like we've shown you for this one. And, and so I bought the design software. I designed us a whole building. Had to learn all these architectural measurements. And I know why they get paid good money now. It's, it's a headache. Did all that stuff and then found out that wasn't going to be our home. So we walked in faith. God, I don't know where you're taking us. But what I do know is that you didn't have us regather post-COVID to let it fizzle out like this. You didn't call us to Mount Pleasant in 2015 just to drop us now. Like you, you did all this stuff. We know you're faithful to finish what you start. So I don't have all the answers, but what I will do is I'll keep walking in faith. And over the last year, I stood on stage literally a year ago, this time, it was this Sunday, 365 days ago. I said, the building we're in is no longer the right fit for us. We're going to go on the hunt for land. One year later, we found it. Land that didn't exist. If you'd have told me we'd have bought land in cash a year ago, I'd have laughed at you because because we have always been a church that met budget but never blown it out the water and when we've done things in the past where we challenge people to give above and beyond we've seen some some fruit but in all honesty it's really just it's been the leaders in our church who have stepped up to the plate But over the last 12 months, we we had the opportunity to buy land and get God's faithful. He's been so faithful. And so as we enter into this next season, I wanted to teach you this message today because if you're a part of Propel Church, this isn't just to build my faith. We are in this thing together. This is to build your faith. God is building your faith through the church he planted you in to know that As you and I enter into this next season, he's covered us in the past and he'll cover us in the future. And so next weekend when we come in together, I'm not telling you what size ditch to dig, but I am asking you to grab a shovel. This is not about equal giving. It's about equal participation. We are coming together as a church to dig ditches and believe God for amazing things. And when we do that, what we know is that he will provide every step of the way. But the greatest thing that God ever provided was not a building. It was a person. And his name is Jesus. And God knew that you and I would be stuck in the midst of our guilt and our sin and our shame. We'd be stuck in bondage and captivity. So God chose to send Jesus to live a sinless life. To pay the penalty and the price for your sin. So that if you put your faith in him, if you put your complete trust and confidence in his payment, you and I could be saved. It's not complete faith or complete trust in being a good person or complete trust in perfect church attendance, complete trust in doing enough good things or giving enough money and then we'll be saved. It's only faith in Jesus that he was enough. He died in your place. He died in mine. And when we put our faith and hope in Him, the harvest is that that river that flowed from Edom now flows within us. John 4, Jesus says there's going to be a living water, like a stream that runs within you, giving you eternal life. That's what happens when we put our faith in Jesus. So with every head bowed, every eye closed around the room today, maybe there's some of you in here who you've put your faith in the wrong thing. You've put your faith in your own abilities. You've put your faith in your efforts. You've put your faith in anything other than Jesus. Maybe you put your faith in people. But if you feel prompted today to put your faith in Jesus, would you just lift your hand for a moment? And say, that's me. Here's what we're going to do, church. Nobody prays alone. We all pray together. Will you repeat this after me? Dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I place my hope and trust in you. Thank you for dying in my place. 
so that I could have new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for checking out today's message at Propel Church. We pray that God spoke to you powerfully. And if you made any kind of decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or recommit your life to Jesus, or maybe you just want to share something that God spoke to you through today's message, do us a favor and send us an email to amen at propel.church. And if God is using this ministry to impact your life and you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so over at propel.church slash give. We pray God's blessing and favor over your life and believe that the best days have yet to come.